Yeah, my name is Tyree Wild. I'm the Warning Coordination Meteorologist uh, with the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, at, with our National Weather Service office here in Portland, Oregon. And today I thought I would uh, you know, talk a little bit about the upcoming winter weather, but I think before we talk about what's going to happen this winter, let's talk a little bit about what happened last winter. Well, last winter we were under what we call a La Nina episode, and for the Pacific Northwest that typically means we're cooler than normal and wetter than normal. Well, we indeed were wetter than normal last year. Out of the Portland airport where we keep uh, the rainfall records, we were about four inches above normal. And as far as uh, snowfall goes, we actually had a pretty good snow year in the Cascade. We're about 115% uh, of normal. Uh, so it was a good, good precipitation year uh, for the, the Portland area in the northern Willamette Valley. Uh, we also had a little bit of flooding last year. We actually had some flooding in November. We actually had some flooding in January and again in March. But how about snowfall happened last year? You know, we were all uh, concerned about uh, snowfall in the Portland area. Well, we actually had about 3.1 inches of snow at the Portland airport. Uh, our biggest snowfall occurred in the middle of January. We had about uh, two and a quarter inches. And we had another uh, snow event in the first of March and another one in the middle of March where we had about a half inch, uh, a third to a half inch in each one of those. We actually flirted with snow, low elevation snow, about uh, eight other times uh, during last winter. It was cold enough to snow, we had some flurries, but it just didn't accumulate. And that was again in uh, March, uh, in February, and also in January. Okay, so what's gonna happen uh, this winter uh, for the next uh, uh, several months? So. One thing when we do winter seasonal forecasts, we like to look and uh, see what kind of uh, El Nino or La Nina state we're in. We, we have some skill in doing long-term uh, forecasts in terms of precipitation and temperature if we're in an El Nino state or a La Nina state. So like I said, last year we were in a La Nina state, but this year we, uh, we actually came out of La Nina in the March-April timeframe. We went to what we call neutral conditions, and we've been in them all summer, but uh, it looks like we're gonna go into a weak El Nino state this year. So next slide. So, uh, so again, we're in ENSO, what we call ENSO neutral conditions right now. And as we go through the fall months, we're gonna transition to a weak El Nino condition. And it looks like we're gonna persist uh, in this El Nino condition through the early winter uh, as we get into the spring, and then we'll probably transition back to uh, ENSO neutral as we get into uh, next summer. So it's gonna be a short-lived uh, El Nino event, and it's gonna be probably fairly weak. So what does that typically mean for the Pacific Northwest? That typically means we're gonna be a little bit drier than normal, and we're gonna be a little bit warmer than normal. That's typically what happens, but not all the time. So uh, one thing we can kind of look at is uh, uh, our, our models, our climate models that we can run. So if uh, we've got one little diagram you might see in this presentation that has a bunch of uh, traces of uh, different climate models. And all of our climate models are actually indicating right now we're going to come out of this uh, uh, ENSO neutral conditions and transition to a, a weak uh, El Nino and then transition back. So it gives us high confidence we're going to kind of stay in this warm phase, if you will, which is, which is El Nino. Okay, and this uh, one diagram here is just a conceptual diagram of what type of weather patterns we typically kind of get in El Nino conditions. And, uh, you know, typically we, a lot of times we'll see the jet stream kind of come into the Pacific Northwest and split either north of us or south of us, and a lot with a lot of the rainfall kind of going south into the southern part of the United States. Uh, and that's typically how we come up just a little bit drier than normal. Uh, so, uh, you know, one thing, uh, another thing we can look at is uh, we can kind of characterize the probability of precipitation distribution uh, by if we're in a weak El Nino, a moderate El Nino, or a strong El Nino. And like I said, this year it looks like we're going to be in a weak El Nino. And if we, if we go look at uh, some of our past studies, it, when we're in weak El Nino states, we actually have a stronger signal uh, for being uh, drier than normal in the Pacific Northwest and wetter than normal in the southern part of the United States, uh, which is a little bit conversely, uh, if we're in a stronger El Nino, uh, uh, we actually have a tendency to be more near uh, uh, precipitation normals here, because just the precipitation distribution kind of creeps itself up from uh, northern California into southern Oregon a little bit. So again, weak El Nino, pretty high uh, probability of being uh, uh, drier than normal. So, so if we look at the, uh, the seasonal outlooks for the upcoming winter, uh, and we're using the information from NOAA's Climate Prediction Center, we, we have skill in, in looking at temperature and precipitation. And we kind of divide it up into three areas. Are we going to be above normal, near normal, or below normal? So if we look at the uh, temperature 
for instance, in October, November, December, so the beginning of the winter. Uh, you can see here where the Pacific Northwest is labeled EC. That means equal chances of being in, in any one of the three categories. Uh, so there's really not a lot of signal there. But if you look at the precipitation, there's really a strong signal of uh, a high probability of being below normal uh, precipitation for November, uh, October, November, and December. So if we roll forward into the next three months, in terms of temperature, we see the same signal. We're kind of equal chances in being any of those three categories. But if we look into precipitation, we still see this really dry signal. We see this signal there's a high, higher than normal probability of being drier than normal for November all the way through uh, the February time frame. So a good strong signal that probably be a little bit drier than normal. So next slide. This particular slide just shows you, uh, there's a slide that shows you uh, about how the, what the rainfall distribution is over Portland over about the last 60 years. And just draw your attention to the, the dark line, which is the average precipitation, and the red line, which is precipitation we get during El Nino years. And you'll see most months, we're a little bit drier than normal, drier than average for rainfall uh, precipitation uh, at the Portland area. If we look at uh, this next chart, this is a uh, snow data in the Portland area since 1940, since we've been keeping it at the airport. And so you can see we have pretty large variation of snowfall over the Portland area. Some years we get some snow, some years we get zero snowfall. And we've had some big, some big snow years, uh, as you can see the most recent one being the 2008 uh, uh, season where we had about two feet of snow. Uh, but I will kind of draw your attention to uh, three of these in three of these particular years. And we call this uh, kind of look at an analog year. So we can kind of go back and look at winters that are very similar to the winter we're going into this year in terms of that El Nino uh, type signal we see. One of those happened to be 51, 52, the other one 76, 77. And then most recently there was uh, two winters, actually 2003 to 2005 we'll look at. Uh, so the 51, 52 winter was actually a little stronger than we are right now. We ended up having, getting about uh, nine and a half inches of snow that year. But then we look at the 76, 77 year, which is very similar to this particular winter. We got no snow. And then we look at that most recent year, that 2003 to 2005, the first year, we actually had kind of a strong uh, El Nino. And we ended up getting about 12 inches of snow, but the next year it weakened, and it's very similar to what we're going into this winter. We actually got no snow. Let's look at our uh, snow signal in the Cascades and in the lowlands, and let's again put this in terms of near our average type of snow and the type of snow we get during El Nino situations. And you see in the mountains and the Cascades, as well as the lowlands, we typically get a little less snow than average. Okay, so let's uh, take a look at the top 10 snowiest winters in Portland we've had uh, over about a 60 year period from 1951 uh, to 2010. So you see that, uh, uh, well, you know, we've had our second snowiest winter in Portland happen in El Nino winter. It was actually happened in 68, 69, if you recall from that one chart. But it was kind of an anomaly year. So even though we're going into El Nino, we typically have drier than normal conditions, you can have a big winter. Uh, so, you know, the, the message here is we all need to prepare because we still can have a big winter. But if we look at the 10 top snowiest winters, we look at about 60% of those happen when we're in what we call neutral conditions or ENSO neutral conditions, where only 20% of them happen when they were El, El Nino. So conversely, if we look at the winters when we had actually no snow, so we got shut out, we had no snow in the Portland area, what we find about uh, over that 60 uh, year record, about 45% of those occurs during El Nino episodes uh, and very much smaller percentage uh, uh, in the other states. Uh, so it gives us a little bit of confidence that uh, again we'll probably have a little bit less snow than normal and perhaps not even any. So next slide. Um, so again all this history tells us you know that uh, during El Nino events uh, it does show a tendency to have no low elevation snow but we can't have big events. You can't have those anomalous years uh, that we get some pretty good snow events. So again, I think the message to all the citizens is even though we're in El Nino, it's typically dry normal, we all need to be prepared because it only takes one storm and that can kind of uh, wreck havoc uh, with, with everybody's day and whether it be commuting or, or whatnot uh, for uh, inclement winter weather. So in summary, I think if we just conclude, it looks like we are gonna go into a weak El Nino episode this coming winter. And so what that means for us in terms of precipitation, we'll probably end up being a little bit below normal. In terms of temperature, we're going to be probably near normal, maybe slightly uh, warmer than normal. And then how about the mountain snowpack? Probably increased odds of being a little bit below normal for our snowpack in the mountains too. 
So again, I just have to say that uh, even though we're going into El Nino, uh, we still can't have an active winter weather by just a few storms. I think, I think there's two phases of uh, weather preparedness is, is number one is kind of uh, get out in front of it before it even occurs, you know, working with our partners to make sure communities are prepared uh, uh, for whether it be winter weather, whether it be severe type weather like thunderstorms and things of that nature. So, so there's an education component to that just to make sure everybody's aware of the threats we typically get over a particular area and know how to prepare for those. And then certainly as we kind of get into an event, we certainly want to draw attention to the unusual. So we have some type of unusual weather event coming or unusual uh, heavy rain event that could cause some flooding and make sure that uh, our partners are informed of the potential for this uh, out of the ordinary weather event and then we can kind of work with our partners to keep get the citizens informed and uh, of what's coming and what to expect in terms of the magnitude of the event and the timing of the event. You know, people can get weather information from uh, internet through the websites weather.gov. Uh, weather.gov slash Portland is where you can get it for the Portland area. That's a really good me uh, method. And we work really closely with a lot of our emergency management partners and uh, utility partners and Department of Transportation partners to, to share information. So you can also get uh, information on, on their distribution uh, sites, like publicalerts.org is a great uh, resource to get information uh, that's ingesting the weather information right from the National Weather Service and getting it live out there almost instantaneously. So that's a really good uh, method to get it. Uh, Facebook uh, and Twitter, social media is a great way to, uh, to stay informed. We push our information out through the social media channels uh, out of our office and the city does too, and the county does, and a lot of our partners do. So that's a great uh, way to get information. And it's a great way to share information, what's going on in your local neighborhood, because we can kind of monitor that information too, and kind of that's sort of some eyes and ears for what's happening on the ground. And then we can kind of integrate that back into the process. Say, for instance, we are expecting a, uh, you know, a low elevation snow event in Portland area here, and boy, once we start seeing some reports come through from social media through some of the citizens, we can pick that up and start uh, integrating that into our, uh, into our warning process, into our products, and, and it helps people uh, keep people informed. So it's a great, that's another great tool.